the last class we discussed regarding arrhythmias among that arrhythmias we discussed regarding bradycardia so uh, we all remember how to approach a patient with bradycardia so what are the basic things that you need to look into you have to see whether the airway breathing circulation is maintained the next thing what you have to see is that you have taken a 20 day ecg and you have to rule out toxicological causes why this patient is having a bradycardia and depending upon the patient is having any symptoms we can call it a symptomatic or unstable or stable bradycardia and what are the symptoms of instability one is altered mental status hypotension signs of shock fourth one is chest pain ischemic chest pain and finally the last one is evidence of heart failure if any of these things is there we will call it as an unstable bradycardia and we have to give atropin maximum three doses of atropin 3 mg is what is maximum or we have to go for transcutaneous or epinephrine and dopamine the patient doesn't have any of the signs of unstability just monitor the patient and look for the causes for bradycardia so that was the discussion done in the last class now we are going to go ahead with an tachycardia algorithm so before going into this tachycardia algorithm we need to know what are the different types of tachycardia what are the different types of tachycardia what is narrow complex we have already discussed in the initial what is narrow complex tachycardia what is narrow complex regular what is narrow complex irregular so ahl algorithm doesn't say that you need to diagnose it as atrial fibrillation or multifocal atrial tachycardia the ahl algorithm just say that if it is narrow complex regular or if it is narrow complex irregular if it is wide complex regular or wide complex irregular but for your further practice you should always know how an ecg of an atrial fibrillation will look like how an ecg of an supraventricular tachycardia will look like how an ecg of a multifocal atrial cardiac will look like these all things we should know so our aim is here today is to learn regarding these different types of tachycardia so as we know tachycardia we can divide them into what are the two types that we can divide is narrow complex and wide complex and among in narrow complex we can again have regular and irregular so what i am going to do today we will just see what are the common narrow complex tachycardia that you will see i am not going to discuss today the ahl algorithm of that what i am going to say today is how will you differentiate between an atrial fibrillation what is a multifocal atrial tachycardia what is a supraventricular tachycardia so these are the three tachycardias that we should know when we are calling it as narrow complex tachycardia we should be able to differentiate each one of this so for aha purpose i am just saying that we have to know whether it is regular narrow complex or irregular or whether it is wide irregular or irregular that's it and aha algorithm is totally different but what i am want to you to learn is that you need to differentiate between each these types of tachycardia so let's see the most common tachycardia that we have usually seen is the sinus tachycardia so as the word implies sinus tachycardia so when you call it a sinus tachycardia there is a p wave there is a qrs complex there is an st segment there is a p wave there is a qrs complex and there is an st segment but the heart rate is above 100 beats per minute so that is what we usually called as sinus tachycardia and in general practice whenever you see a patient usually when the sinus tachycardia the heart rate will be less than 150 if it is above 150 it is not sinus there is something else that is happening so usually when we call it as sinus tachycardia the heart rate will be around 100 more than 100 but less than 150 beats per minute that is what you need to remember so what will be the criteria for to call it as sinus tachycardia there will be a p wave so it will be regular sinus tachycardia will be regular and there will be a p wave and each p wave is followed by a qrs complex so that's it you have a normal ecg complex but when you analyze the heart rate the heart rate is on the higher side it is above 100 how will you calculate the heart rate 300 divided by number of large squares between r and r rule suppose you have got two ecg complex like this okay so you have to calculate how many suppose this is, there is a one large complex here one large here one large here so how many large squares are there 
300 divided by approximately 2.5. 2.5 R square. So that will give you the heart rate. So that is what you have to do. 2, 300 divided by number of large squares in an ECG between two QRS complex. You can, between RR and RL, you can calculate and you can find out the heart rate. So that is the first thing that we need to do. That is sinus tachycardia. So what is sinus tachycardia? Sinus tachycardia will have an, it's a regular tachycardia. It is a narrow complex, regular tachycardia and each P wave is followed by a QRS complex. That normal rhythm will be there, but the heart rate will be above 100, but usually it will not go beyond 150. So that is what sinus tachycardia. When somebody is asking you what is sinus tachycardia, you need to explain this way. Sinus tachycardia is a narrow complex, regular tachycardia with each P wave followed by a QRS complex and the heart rate above 100 beats per minute, but usually less than 150 beats per minute. In certain situations, it can go up to 160 also. But in general definition practices, we call it as 150 beats per minute. So that is what is sinus tachycardia. So it is clear. So once you get an ECG, you have to see what is the rate in the ECG. And if it is tachycardia, you have to see whether it is narrow QRS or wide QRS. And then you have to see whether it is regular or irregular. So that is the next thing that you need to see. Next thing what you have to see is the most common Next state, sinus tachycardia, after sinus tachycardia is something called as supraventricular tachycardia. Supraventricular tachycardia. So, supraventricular tachycardia is again an example of narrow complex tachycardia. Narrow complex tachycardia and again it is regular. So, supraventricular tachycardia is again, it's a narrow complex tachycardia and is regular. So, we will have two regular complexes tachycardia. Two regular narrow complex tachycardia. One is sinus tachycardia and second one is supraventricular tachycardia. But what will happen here, there will not be any P waves here. So, with absent P waves. So, that we can say that with absent P waves. For initial purpose, I am just telling you this. But there are again SVT, there are two types of SVT that I am not going to confuse you right now. There is something called as AVRT and AVNRT. So basically there are two types of type, sinus, uh, SVT but just for time being you just remember that SVT is what? It is a narrow complex regular tachycardia with absent P waves. Usually the heart rate will be above 150 beats per minute. Another patient. Okay, so whenever somebody is telling that the patient is having SVT, so what do you have to know what is SVT? SVT is a narrow complex regular tachycardia with absent waves. That's it. Then you have two types just for theoretical purpose AV reentry tachycardia and AV node reentry tachycardia. That is the full form. AV reentry tachycardia and AV node reentry tachycardia. For your level, I am not going to, you to confuse with this. For time being, this is enough. But remember that absent P waves with regular narrow complex tachycardia is always called as SVT. And there can be of two types of SVT. It can be AVRT or AVMRT. That is the only thing that you need to remember for the time being. Okay. So that is SVT. So somebody saying SVT, you should know what is the ECG finding. So you should know that it should be a narrow complex regular tachycardia with absent P waves. So we have completed two regular tachycardias. Now we have two irregular tachycardias. Irregular tachycardias. Among this, the most important one is atrial fibrillation, or otherwise short form we can call it as AF. So what is AF? It is AF is pretty simple. It is a narrow complex tachycardia, irregular. with absent P waves. Narrow complex, irregular tachycardia with absent P waves. What is happening is that, this is your right atria ventricle. So, is this the SA node? Usually you should have a, how the P wave is formed. The initial half of the P wave is from the right atrium. Then, the next half is from the left atrium. So that is how a P wave is formed. When you have a normal P wave, the a impulse is getting generated from the SA node. From that SA node, it is getting transmitted to the AV node. So SA node, when an impulse is getting generated, so the initial half of the P wave is representing your right atria and the next half is represented by the left atria. In some books, they have said they have divided this into three parts. Initial half by the right atria, 
and meet by both right and left atria together and later by the left atria. But whichever way it is, the initial half is by the right atria and the next half is by the left atria. That is the simple thing that you can remember. So what is happening in an atrial fibrillation? Suppose you have got a mitral valve pathology. Okay, so there is a mitral stenosis here. So when my mitral stenosis happens, what will happen to the left atria? The size will enlarge. So suppose an impulse was getting generated from one area like this. Because it has become enlarged, this inverse generation will become spread to various parts of the heart. So instead of having one position, the impulse is getting generated from multiple positions. So what will happen? When you have a normal atrial contraction, you will get a normal P wave. So you don't have a normal atrial contraction. Instead of contracting, what is happening? Atria is fibrillating. Fibrillating is just like shivering. So instead of contracting, the atria is fibrillating. So as a result, what will happen? You will not get any P waves. Instead of that, P waves, it will be replaced by something called as fibrillary waves. So atrial fibrillation, what you will be able to see is that something called as fibrillary waves. Usually we will see in V1 or V2. So fibrillary waves, normal P wave is replaced by something called as fibrillary waves. So what is atrial fibrillation? Atrial fibrillation, it is a narrow complex, irregular tachycardia with absent P waves and P waves has been replaced by fibrillary waves. So that is atrial fibrillation. So, when you are seeing an irregular tachycardia, heart rate above 100, then what you have to see that, whether it is regular or irregular, it is irregular, white QRS, narrow QRS, narrow QRS, there is no P wave, instead of P wave, it is replaced by fibrillary waves, we can call it as narrow complex, irregular tachycardia with absent P waves, with replaced with fibrillary waves, that is atrial fibrillation. So, remember, whenever you call atrial fibrillation, these are the criteria to be set in when you have to call something as an atrial fibrillation. Clear? Yeah. Now, the next thing, what you have to remember is, there is something called as multifocal atrial tachycardia. That is the next form of one of the irregular tachycardia, multifocal atrial tachycardia. So, as the name itself say, what is it? It is multifocal. Atria is generating impulses from multiple foci. But when it is only fibrillating, it will be atrial fibrillation. But instead of that, it is not fibrillating, it is contracting. So, instead of one focus, it is going into multiple foci. But what will happen? There is P wave. P wave is seen. There is no doubt that the P wave is seen. But each P wave will be different from other P wave. So P waves will be there in an ECG complex. But when you look at the every P waves, the P wave morphology will not be the same. If you have more than three P wave morphology, when you take a 12 lead ECG and you are seeing more than three types of different types of P wave in the ECG and it is a narrow complex tachycardia and it is irregular, you can name it as what? Multifocal atrial tachycardia. So, multifocal atrial tachycardia is what? It is a narrow complex. Again, it is a narrow complex, irregular tachycardia with more than three different P wave morphology. So, you take it to 12 lead ECG and you check that each P wave, it is regular, it is sorry, it is irregular. And when then what you have to see, what you have the next thing is the, it is narrow complex. Narrow complex, irregular. We are looking at the P waves. See, P waves are seen. When P waves are seen, it is not atrial fibrillation. It is irregular. See, one P wave doesn't look like another P wave. And other P wave doesn't look like another P wave. There are more than three different types of P wave in that ECG. So when we have more than three different types of an ECG, and it is narrow complex and irregular, we can call it as multifocal <laughs> tachycardia or match, it is a short form. <coughs> multifocal atrial tachycardia. So these are the different tachycardia. For your level, I think this should be mandatory enough. Then there are other called as atrial tachycardias, atrial flutters and all those things that I am not discussing for the time being because it will create more confusion in your mind. So what you need to remember, these are the common tachycardia that we will see. These are the most common tachycardia that we see here. So first one, I have said that whenever you see a tachycardia, what you have to see, you have to see whether it is 
narrow complex or whether it is wide complex tachycardia, regular or irregular. The next thing here also regular or irregular. The next thing what you have to do is that we have taken this side. So narrow complex, regular examples I have told. Most common one is sinus tachycardia. Then the next one is SVT. So what is sinus tachycardia? There is tachycardia, heart rate less than 150 and each P wave is followed by a QRS complex. Then SVT, again it is a narrow complex regular tachycardia with absent P waves. So that is SVT. Then we have irregular tachycardia examples, what all we have said. Examples one is atrial fibrillation. Second one is multifocal atrial tachycardia. AF is what? Irregular, narrow complex with absent P waves, no P waves. MAT is irregular again. It is narrow complex, but P waves are saying more than 3 P wave morphology. For the time being, this should be sufficient for you. And patient management doesn't depend on this. Patient management depends on what? Whether the patient is stable or unstable. So signs of instability we have already said. But before going to this, you need to understand what are the different types of tachycardia. That was the purpose what I took this class today. So the algorithm is totally different algorithm. What we are seeing is different. So they are not asking whether it is an atrial fibrillation or this. This thing we will discuss it tomorrow. But for time being, you should understand what are the different types of narrow complex tachycardia. How will you differentiate each one of this in the ECG? Clear? Okay.